Hello friends. I got a package in the mail today. I'm extremely excited to receive this deck and book set. This is the Tarot of Transformation. It is by Willow Arlenea and Jasmine Lee Corey. And you can uh, obtain this. It's an independently published book. And their website, I'll put a link in the description box below. Uh, I believe it's called Mystic Life Designs. But I'll put the link down below so you can have it. I, I may have gotten the name of the website inaccurately. So let's open this up and see what we have. I saw this being reviewed on another person's channel and I immediately was drawn to it. Um, this is not a Rider Waite clone. These cards have unique meanings that are independent of Rider Waite. And there are keywords on the cards. And the keywords uh, actually have a slightly different twist on them than you would traditionally associate with the cards if you've uh, learned with Rider Waite Smith. So you got to kind of expand your consciousness a little bit to use this deck. But uh, having said that, I think they're beautiful. And I can't wait to dive in. So here is how it's packaged. There is a um, sort of a cardboardy book cover here. Then we have a very nice uh, guidebook. We've got uh, thumbnails of the cards, black and white which is very nice for reading and learning about the cards. You don't have to actually have the uh, cards to correlate with the book. You can see the images right right on the page with the, uh, with the interpretations. Now let me see. So the contents of this book, wow, this has really got a lot of information. There's a preface from both of the authors, the author and the artist, I'm presuming. Working with the tarot, origin, meanings about this deck, about the major arcana, the minors, working with the cards. Then there's uh, information on each card individually. And a lot of these cards are renamed in this deck. For instance, uh, the hermit becomes the crone. The empress becomes the earth mother. The tower becomes Kali, the goddess of destruction. And the suits of the minor arcana, the suit of swords, discs, cups, and wands. And I believe the court cards are also renamed. But they make sense. They, they jive with the meaning of the cards more than the traditional uh, moniker, moniker of the card. Okay, so I don't want to linger too long over the book. If you decide to buy this uh, book and deck, very reasonably priced. It was $45 for the set, and the shipping is also included. Now that's shipping here to the U.S. I don't know if you live outside the U.S., how the shipping would work. Okay, let me see what we have in the back here. Sometimes there are little treasures in the backs of these books. Cards by theme, now that's different. We've got cards that represent abundance, acceptance, balance, beginnings. Oh, that'll be very interesting to use. Very nice. And here we have a table, the cards of the major, major arcana, with the keywords little more expanded keywords than what's on the cards themselves. And then, ooh, this is also, oh, this is really great, a summary, a very succinct summary in just a few pages here of all the suits of the deck, all the cards and all the suits. Wonderful. So the one author, Jasmine Corey, works as a licensed psychotherapist. She's the author of self-help psychology books. And so I'm assuming that Willow is the artist. Willow Arlenea, the visual arts, 
began her career as a professional artist and a healer. Has a master's degree in transpersonal psychotherapy in Boulder, Colorado. So very cool. So let's move right along to the cards. Now you'll notice there is no uh, box for these cards. So once you open this uh, deck, you're going to have to get a bag or a little box of some sort to store them in. Okay, let's get these opened up. The artwork in these is very dreamy and it reminds me of an oracle deck. My goodness, this is a very difficult plastic to remove. So here are the backs. Beautiful purple and kind of blue highlighting or shadowing. The cardstock is very nice, surprisingly. It's not too thick or thin. It's semi shiny, more shiny than matte, I would say. Uh, size, probably. A little taller than your average tarot, a little bit bigger. You could trim these if you wanted to, but I've had some cautions from other reviewers that not all the images are the same size, so you have to be very cautious if you're trimming. Here, for instance, is one that's totally different in size. So if you're one of those people that like to trim your decks down, just be cautioned. Oh, and they're nice and flexible. So great. They're not too big for my hands. Not too tall that I can't riffle shuffle. Okay. Now let's get this other part of the deck open here. This is always the worst part of opening a deck to me. Is trying to carefully get the plastic off without ruining the cards in the process. Don't want to ruin my beautiful cards. Okay, so you can see right off the bat that they are color-coded in the margins and these are the major arcana. They're a lilac colored border. Here we have wands. They're pink. Cups are blue, which makes perfect sense to me. Let's see, here's a few majors. And the discs are green, which fits in well with the earth theme of discs. And swords are yellow, which corresponds to air. So I love how the color correspondences are done. They make perfect sense to me. So let us go through the Major Arcana first. And this deck is so pretty. I just can't get over how beautiful these images are. To me, the art, it's all about the art. So here we have the Fool, keywords, innocence or ignorance. And she's sort of a Harlequin figure. The Magician, Master of Conscious Creation. I did see another reviewer uh, of this deck where she had cut the bottoms off and left the keywords, which is an unusual way to do something, but I think that works very well with this deck. And when I saw that the uh, the name of the card was cut off but the keywords are left, it really reminded me more of an oracle deck. 
So you would see this image and it says Master of Conscious Creation. And you wouldn't know that it was number one, the magician. You might think it's discs, you know, maybe ten of discs or something with all these discs here. But uh, you could use this as an oracle deck. I thought that when I saw her review. Here we have the High Priestess, Feminine Mysteries and Intuitive Wisdom. Just stunning. Look at that artwork. She's lifting the veil. The veil of the mysteries of the universe. Here we have the Earth Mother or Queen of Life. Really spectacular. And I love this. In place of the Emperor, we have the Green Man. Love, love, love this card. This is a very nature-based, very earthy deck. Very spiritual and soulful deck. It would be very good for meditation, path work. Your card of the day. Here we have spiritual leaders taking the Hierophant off the pedestal. And we see a couple of different type of spiritual leaders here. The chakras. Beautiful. This looks sort of Native American here. I'll be interested to read the book and see what information they give me on the cards. Here we have the lovers, love in the highest octave. Isn't that beautiful? The bird with two birds flying within, and then the two human figures at the bottom. In the river, the stars and moons, planets. Looks like Andromeda galaxy there. Gosh, I just love this artwork. It's so stunning. I know I keep saying that. I keep repeating myself, but it really is. Look at this gorgeous chariot. Agent of change. Here we have balance in place of justice. Restoring cosmic order. The crone, light of introspection, to replace the hermit. So you really get that sense of wisdom and elder, seeking knowledge. We've got a couple seekers here, which you don't tr usually see in a traditional hermit card. Next we have the Wheel of Fortune, flowing with change. This is the card that the image, the art image, is actually a little smaller than the others. So be aware of that if you plan to trim the deck down. Flowing with change. I don't believe I'll, you know, I, I have trimmed very few decks, maybe one or two. And it would have to be really some, some sort of a feature with the deck that really annoyed me before I would want to trim it. Unobtrusive borders like these really don't bother me. Strength. Look at that beautiful strength card. Wow. Got sort of an Isis look. She's got various animals. Bird, snake. The Eye of Horus above the pyramids. Moving from the core. Strength. Then we have number 12, the hanged man, not in control. I really think that this is one of the most beautiful hanged man cards that I have ever seen. Death, grieving and letting go. Ascending to the next plane. Temperance, 
or integrating polarities. The devil. Separation from the source. You know, I grew up uh, as a Catholic and went to Catholic school, and they taught us that a lot of people believe, I don't know if this is an actual church teaching, but a lot of people believe that this is what hell is. It's actually being separated from God or separated from the source. So to me, this card really hits home. When you're separated from your authentic self and separated from the divine, that is the devil. In place of the tower, we have Kali, goddess of destruction in the Hindu religion. Shattering the structure. Not one of my favorite cards in this deck, but it's still very beautiful. The star, I love this star card. And if you look on their website, um, a lot of this artwork you can actually order prints, and I believe this particular print is supposed to represent the winter solstice. Very pretty. The star. Guiding light. The moon. Peace in the darkness. I love that interpretation for the moon. Now see if you had, if you did not know that this card was the moon, if you had trimmed this off, there's no actual image of a moon in this card. So you might be kind of confused. So I would not want to trim this card. Peace in the darkness. The radiance of being, or the sun. She's just an amazing artist. I'm just in awe of these cards. Transcending judgment. Instead of judgment, we have compassion. And since this is the Tarot of Transformation, I like that they've transcended the traditional Christian imagery with more healing and compassionate images or themes. Beautiful. There's like a healing pool. So no judgment, just love. And then the last card in the Major Arcana, the cosmos instead of the world. And the Key word is given as the multi-dimensional universe. And look at this artwork. Really special. So much detail. So that is the cosmos the multi-dimensional universe. Okay, then let's begin with the uh, cups, ace of cups or one of cups, dissolving into oneness. You could spend a lot of time on any individual card in this deck. Two of cups, authentic connection. Very nice. That, that's a typical Rider Waite sense for the Two of Cups. Connection, uh, love, partnership. So that seems fairly traditional to me. The Three of Cups, receiving grace. Four of Cups, untying the mask, revealing your authentic self.
Five of Cups, Natural Intimacy. Wow. That's all I can say is wow. The Six of Cups, Sharing Support. Giving, sharing, love, unity. Nostalgia kind of fits in with that theme. Seven of Cups, Drama Queen. So instead of the image where you've got the seven cups and seven choices, you've got this idea of self-reflection and seeing why are you acting the way you are. You know, put the drama aside. Very interesting. She's got an audience down here too. Drama Queen. Eight of Cups. Human Doing. The Nine of Cups. Mental Detour. Kind of a rest and reflection sort of a card. Ten of Cups is Joyous Flow. And that really does represent the Ten of Cups to my mind. Okay, then we have, in place of the Queen, we have the Healer. This is the Healer of Cups. Healing the inner child. In place of king, we have master. Same idea. Master of cups, abiding in love. In place of the page, we have server. Server of cups. Attending to emotional needs. I was sort of on the fence about this deck and I thought, you know, even if I don't want to use it for tarot because it's so different from Rider Waite, I could just actually trim and leave the keywords and use it as a um, an oracle deck. Or this would be a good deck to use to clarify meanings of other cards in your reading from other decks. Exploring the inner landscape is Teacher of Cups and the Teacher is the Knight. Explorer of Cups, very cool. Teacher of Cups, exploring the inner landscape. So going within, represented by the ocean. Each card here is just a masterpiece. Here we have the discs. One of discs. Birth into form. Kind of got the egg theme going there. Rebirth. Two of discs. Balance in material life. That's a similar interpretation as we have in Rider Waite. And fish is represented sometimes to represent material things, wealth, prosperity. So I kind of like that those are your two for the two of discs. Three of discs, integrated work. Just lovely. Four of discs. Look at that turtle, or as they say in Hawaii, Honu. One of my totem animals. Manifesting home. The four of discs.
very different idea than Rider weight where you see somebody hoarding or putting money in their purse or sitting on their money. This is a little much, much deeper meaning. Five of discs, releasing stuck energy. I like that. Kind of takes the doom and gloom view away from the five of discs or five of pentacles. The six of discs, web of life. Oh gosh, isn't that beautiful? Six of discs, web of life. Seven of discs, incubation. Very similar in meaning to Rider Waite. If you think about the gentleman with the leaning on his shovel and the seven pentacles in the tree, He's sort of in a waiting pattern, waiting for his harvest, and incubation is kind of the same idea. You know, you're in a waiting or a holding pattern. Incubation. There's bears hibernating. Okay, eight of discs. Skillful perseverance. Again, that's not too far from Rider weight because the Eight of Pentacles normally shows a skilled craftsman, very accomplished person. And we have this tagged as being skillful perseverance. The Nine of Discs, Instinctual Wisdom. So no lady with a bird. We've got a wolf pack here. I like this. Here's kind of a wolf figure, but the reflection looks kind of like a kitty cat. Maybe his tamer side. Then we have the Ten of Discs, the Great View. Spectacular. Wow, look at that. Look at the feathers. It kind of looks like an Indian headdress, although it's actually the wings of this large bird here and the tail feathers. The great view. Okay, then the court cards for the discs. Healer or queen of discs. Healing the planet. Perfect. Because discs have to do with the material world, so that's the planet. Healing the planet. From the healer of discs. Love the orcas. It's funny how the sea creatures are what we think of first when we think of healing the planet. I believe the sea is so vulnerable to pollution and we always think of sea creatures when we think of the planet being at risk for extinctions and so forth. Gracious abundance. This is the master of discs. Gracious Abundance. Then we have the Server or Page of Discs. Loyal Friend. And then the Teacher of Discs, which would be the Knight of Discs. Passionate play. Okay, we've still got two more suits to go, and don't you feel like you've already been on a complete tour of an art museum? And we're only about halfway through the minors. These are just so special. One of swords or ace of swords, point of origination. Very cool. Look at the campfire. I was trying to think to myself, how would I kind of relate to my mind to making this card seem like it would be swords? And the only thing I could come up with as far as air energy was the fact that there was a flute be being played. It almost is more of a wands energy with that campfire there. And the coloring, the red 
and orange. But I love it. One of Swords, Point of Origination. Two of Swords, Creative Differences. A lot of nice Native American imagery in this deck. Three of Swords. Love this. Finally, somebody doesn't have three swords stuck through a heart. Three of Swords moving toward freedom. The butterfly being set free. Wonderful. Love that. Four of Swords, Stabilizing Mind. That's beautiful as well. Like a stained glass window. Somebody at rest, kind of gazing through the stained glass. Stabilizing Mind. That is a very restful card, so in that sense it does have the same feel as the Rider Waite Four of Swords, where you have the, uh, the knight kind of resting on a pallet and the swords kind of around him. And he looks like he's in a church, and here we've got the church window feel. Holding the vision, five of swords. Beautiful. There's actually a sword. So, and a type of a winged animal here. So that helps me relate to this as being a sword or air or bird type card. Five of Swords, holding the vision. He's right on target. Six of Swords, structures for the journey. Instead of a boat sailing into the calmer waters, we've got a lady walking into a calmer place. So, you know, it's it's just a little bit different take on the card. Not too far off from Rider Waite, but a different Slightly different interpretation. Structures for the journey. Six of Swords. Seven of Swords. Rainbow Bridge. I'm going to have to read what the book has to say about this card because to me, a Rainbow Bridge is sort of relating to a poem about where your pets go when they die. So I don't know if that's just a casual uh, view of Rainbow Bridge. I would, let me, let's take a look and see what the book says real quickly, if you don't mind. Let's see, that is Seven of Swords. Let's see, with number seven, we make a leap. We move beyond the Earth Principle where all the earlier numbers are related to biological forms, to the heaven principle, which is the more transcendent source. Seven is also the number of the Sabbath, which is how the heaven principle interacts with the weekly calendar. That's very interesting. In the picture on the card, a woman stands bathed in the energy of the rainbow bridge, the bridge to heaven. Heaven is not so much a place as a vibratory level we can learn to enter. It is represented here by an angelic being. The rainbow with its seven colors is often used as a symbol of this consciousness, so the rainbow bridge is a doubly potent image. The invitation of this card is to step out of ordinary mind into higher consciousness and let the blessings of heaven rain down on you. Wonderful. Okay. So it is heaven, not just for pets, but for all of us. Rainbow bridge. Beautiful card. Eight of Swords, Equanimity. Very pretty. Nine of Swords, Trust Walk. So instead of nightmare and self-doubt, you're trusting in what the universe has in store for you moving forward confidently. I love that. Ten of Swords, leaving the story. Luckily we don't have ten swords stuck through a body to give us that feeling of leaving the story. 
This is cool. This reminds me of the Grand Canyon. Very nice. Leaving the story. Healer of Swords or the Queen of Swords. Mapping the Mind. Oh, perfect. Mental exercises are healing your mind. Master of Swords. Reading the Web. So mastering the interconnectedness of all beings and the intercommunications. Oh wow, that's gorgeous. Reading the web for the Master of Swords. Server of Swords or Page of Swords. Cutting away illusion. Wonderful. Brief and to the point. And then Teacher of Swords, which is the Knight of Swords. Inquiring Mind. Inquiring Minds want to know. Teacher of Swords. Look at there, he's doing a science experiment. Alchemy. And creating something wonderful through his inquiring mind. A great card for science. Okay, and then we move on to our last suit, the Wands. Grounding for Creativity. One of Wands. Oh, wow, isn't that beautiful? Two of Wands, Healing Sexual Energy. It's a little different than other tarot decks. Three of Wands, Authentic Nourishment. Four of Wands, Opening the Heart. So as you can see, this is all centered on healing thoughts and healing images. Opening your heart, Four of Wands. It's sort of, I mean, if you really think about it, it does have a similar inner meaning or basic meaning to the Four of Swords that you see in Rider Waite where there are the uh, four, not swords, Four of Wands. There are the Four Wands and the celebratory garlands. But it's a celebration, and so is opening the heart. Another celebration. Five of Wands, freeing your expression. Rather than an image of stress and conflict and people fighting with their clubs. I like that, freeing your expression. Six of Wands, inner seeing. So rather than being a triumphant victor riding into town on your horse, you're sort of conquering your inner self, looking within for your victory. Nice. Inner scene. Seven of Wands. Opening to Angels. The detail in these cards is just amazing. Eight of Wands, Dream Time. Nine of Wands, Tantric Sexuality. I love how she's got the chakras down her back. And the Ten of Wands, No Self. I'd have to read a little more on the intended meaning for this card too, but I don't want to take any more time because this video is really running a lot longer than I had intended. Okay, the Court Cards, Healer of Wands or Queen of Wands. Oh gosh, that's gorgeous. Stunning. Master of Wands, the Temple of the Goddess.
Server of Wands, Transmitter of Light. And Teacher of Wands, Spirit in Matter. So I hope you enjoyed this brief walkthrough unboxing. I'm going to have to really dive into the book so to get some real insight into how this deck should be used. I love the cards and the cardstock is not bad at all. Let me see, I believe I'll be able to pretty easily shuffle it, which is always a good thing. Let's see. You know, they're just slightly, ever so slightly too long. That might be an argument for trimming off one end or the other. Okay, so they shuffle nicely. They're beautiful, they're healing, they're soft, they're gorgeous. Love this deck. I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough, and if you did, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. And we will talk to you again next time. Good night.